Good afternoon. This is Dawn Taylor with Members First. I want to um, first start by thanking uh, Susan for asking me to be a part of the Evergreen Chapter webinar series. Thank you, Susan. Um, this is a, um, a webinar that is exclusive for the Evergreen Chapter. Um, also, I want to thank all of you for attending today. I do greatly appreciate it. Um, we are recording this webinar, so I will also post it to the Evergreen um, Chapter's website if anyone wants it for reference um, following the webinar. I am excited today to share with you how different it is to market to millennials versus baby boomers and even Gen Xers, and how an inbound approach to marketing will prove to be your most successful going forward. Just a quick housekeeping note, um, everyone is on mute and you will remain on mute through the entire presentation. Um, there is a, a GoToWebinar panel that has a question box and I would ask you if you have any questions, please just submit them in that question box. Um, and what I will do in the end is I will address all of the questions and answer them in the end. Also, I will give out a code at the end of the webinar that you can email to Susan in order to get credit for this webinar. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. This is the club member life cycle, and every member will move through the life cycle at his or her own pace. Our goal as marketers should not be how can we effectively move members through the cycle and out the door, but instead it should be getting members stuck in here with retention and advocacy. We want them to be members for a lifetime, and we want them to make our lives easier by telling everyone they know to join the club. This isn't always easy, as we know, but no matter what, there are some fundamentals we need to get right before even considering how we start. So let's address this. Starting with awareness, the term marketing does not have to be a scary word in the private club industry. It is all about just making people aware of your club and what you offer. And it's okay that you might offer it to members only. We will talk about the most effective way to make a prospect aware of your brand. Traditional marketing has changed and we all need to adapt if we want to be successful. Under consideration, once you make them aware of your brand, you need to make them want to consider it for themselves. One way is to show them that you are the experts in what you do by providing them with good and relevant content, which we will discuss. Purchase, once they start considering your brand, you want them to go ahead and inquire or apply for a membership. And then a very important stage here is retention. Once they become members, how do you keep them coming back and spending time and money at your club? There's a lot of competition out there for social activities and dining alone. How do you get your members to choose the club over the latest hip restaurant in Seattle? You have to make sure that you stay top of mind with your members and an expert in their eyes. This can be done by providing really good content that they are interested in. In the area of dining, it could be cooking tip videos, could be recipes or food and wine pairing information. With golf and tennis, for example, it could be tip videos, it could be blogs, or even forums to keep members engaged with you. And even more important than just retaining them is to have them be your brand ambassadors. You want your members to be so happy with your club and the programs you offer and the advice you provide that they refer their friends and family. The first step is to know who you are and who you are targeting. First, know who you are and what you offer. Once you really identify this, you can perform a buyer persona to determine who you should be targeting. A buyer persona identifies your target customer or member, and it's typically done through interviews and surveys of staff and members, as well as market research. Your club also, it can um, definitely have more than one buyer persona. Once you know your buyer personas and where they spend their time online, you can more effectively reach them with relevant content to make them aware of your brand. Um, I hope none of us on this call feel that this image accurately represents the target market that you're trying to attract. However, what we do find so often is that we still find ourselves stuck with the strategic mindset used to attract this crowd when in fact it's not them that we want walking through our doors, right? It's retirees who have a lot of newfound time on the hands 
to spend golfing, playing tennis, so socializing in card groups and fitness classes and at wine socials, all the types of events that you probably offer. But they might not know you offer them or even who you are because you aren't providing them with the content in the areas that they look online. Same with the young family and the recent empty nesters and the modern executive and the traditional business person or the privileged 20-somethings with more money than they know what to do with. Whoever it is that you're trying to attract, we need to understand and accept that the marketing mix is very different for each demographic. We need to start communicating with people in the way that they already communicate. And the first step, again, is understanding who you are as a club and projecting that image that properly caters to your demographic of choice. Change is coming. We cannot avoid it. A big change that we are seeing here is the number of millennials are outpopulating the number of baby boomers. And millennials require a very different marketing approach. I'm actually going to play a quick video here. There's, um, it's just about a minute long. There's no narration, um, but there's a lot of really fun facts on millennials. And any of you who watch uh, Survivor, it's, it's kind of a staple in, in my household, last season uh, focused on Gen Xers competing with millennials. It was fun to watch to really see how each group approach different things in Survivor, like building their camp and taking on challenges. And it really was so different how um, both Gen Xers and millennials approached things. There are some interesting uh, stats that you are seeing here. Um, millennials, of course, are from the age of 18 to 34. They would rather lose their car than their cell phone. I think that's my favorite stat. 75% have created a social media profile. 62% log into Facebook on a daily basis. Millennials send 2,000 text messages per month. A lot. And they make decisions based on research and they want a customized experience. That last fact, along with all the others, is why changing the way we market our club is really critical. So let's talk a little bit just about uh, club culture, progressive versus traditional. You don't have to be one or the other, but do ask yourself, do your club policies, programs, and environment reflect the values of your desired member? And think about those members of tomorrow, more importantly. For me, I'm in my mid-40s. I have a decent job. I do travel quite a bit for work. I'm pretty active. I want a club that would offer like an amazing food and beverage program, have lots of activities I could get involved in, but also might have reciprocal privileges that, at other clubs that I could maybe use when I travel. Even if you do err on the side of uh, traditionalism today, a solid understanding of your business brand and who your core personas are will only help you in the future when change comes, and it's definitely coming. How clearly are you able to articulate to prospects what your club culture is? And do you have a clearly defined culture that you represent? Many of you probably do, but it may not be current based on your buyer personas. It's certainly something to start evaluating. So let's talk about traditional marketing versus digital marketing. Traditional recruitment strategies um, as you see here, are things like word of mouth, referral programs, invite a friend or a colleague to the club, kind of spend a day, regional advertising, reciprocal partnerships like other clubs and management companies, different golf networks, real estate agents, florists, local businesses. Definitely not saying that you have to abandon all of these. However, what you do want to know is that um, they're becoming quite outdated and they are not relevant sources of marketing to millennials. So let's talk about digital opportunities. Your website should reflect your brand and should be the core of your marketing. So you are driving traffic from all other resources to your website. Your website pages are really your digital storefront. So you want to put your best face forward. You want to optimize your website to appeal to your ideal buyers and transform your website into a beacon of helpful content to entice the right strangers to visit your pages.
and you want to make it easy to find. Your prospective members begin their buying process online, usually by using search engines to find something that they have a question about. So you need to make sure you're appearing prominently when and where they search. To do that, you need to carefully and analytically pick keywords, optimize your pages, create content, and build links around your terms, the terms that your ideal buyers are searching for. Search engine optimization should be done at the launch of your website and can also continue with ongoing programs. Google does like constantly changing content such as blogs and changing keywords. So keeping up with an ongoing SEO program will certainly help your club with natural ranking within Google. An example here of the um, intuitive hyperlinking that you see would be um, having something on your website that says view our summer wedding brochure as opposed to just click here. And then there's search engine marketing, which is the practice of creating paid ads within Google or other search sites. It gives you a guaranteed spot on Google based on certain keywords and phrases. You are required to have a monthly budget with Google and you manage to that budget. Each keyword or key phrase has a going rate. Could be pennies, it could be dollars. You should also have um, a custom landing page on your website. So when someone clicks from a paid ad, they go to your landing page where they are asked for their name and email address. This allows you to capture them as a lead in exchange for a piece of content. The content could be a white paper on the top 10 reasons to join a private club or the top 10 reasons why a city or business club can help grow your business or the club's current wedding brochure. Depending on what the ad was about, the offer should be customized so it is relevant content for the individual who clicked the ad. And you always do want to require name and email address before giving them the content. Secondly, regarding your website, you want to make it impactful. In just the blink of an eye, a visitor is already judging your club by your website. The look and feel, the ease of finding information, and also how mobile friendly it is nowadays. Here's an example of Mirabelle Golf Club in Scottsdale, Arizona. We hooked them up with a drone company we work with who created an amazing drone video for them of the course. It really showcases their beautiful golf course and with the tagline, Experience Mirabelle. They also had the drone company break up the footage per hole and we built it into a hole by hole um, golf course tour for them. This is a still photo from the drone video. One important thing I do want to mention um, is that they incorporated people into the video. It really is important when you're taking photos at the club and around the course that you do include people. The photos in the website should really tell a story, whether it's on your golf course, on the patio, inside the bar, or on the docks at a yacht club. Prospective members need to be able to visualize themselves at your club. In empty rooms, regardless of how beautiful the chairs and the bar stools are, isn't really going to do that for them. This is an example of a hole-by-hole -hole golf course tour. It is a wonderful way to show off your golf course and uh, your scorecard. Uh, this actually is one area of photos where you don't necessarily need people because you really are just showing off the course. Having um, multiple photos per hole from the tee box, the fairway, and the green is a great way to really showcase your golf course. Um, a historical timeline, this, um, this is a great way to incorporate your history into your website, but incorporating it into a modern design, what it does is it shows the prospective, the prospective member or a visitor to your club that your club has history, but that it's not stuffy, and it kind of makes it cool to be historic. Videos, videos, I can't say enough about videos. Um, I really can't stress how important video is becoming. It does um, a few different things for both you at the club as well as your member or your prospect. Um, number one is it can heighten the image a member has of your staff. When they see a golf pro or a tennis pro providing tips in a video, it really shows them as an expert. It also could increase lessons, um, which certainly could increase participation at the club and certainly revenue for the club. Um, fitness tips are some of my uh, favorite video tips. If you do have a fitness center, have your fitness director uh, spend a few seconds explaining each piece of equipment, how to adjust the seat, the weight, where you should be positioned, 
Um, it really breaks down the barrier of uncomfortableness for a member when they're going into your fitness center, especially if you have some older women at the club that may just not be that comfortable in the fitness center. It's really a great way to break down that barrier for them. Also, if you are a yacht club, for example, you could use video to video um, junior sailing camp. And then you host the video on your website. You can host it for, uh, sorry, you host it on YouTube for free. Um, but then you can embed it into your website. You can email a link to parents in order to view it and then direct them to a registration form on your website. So all you're doing, you're just promoting your junior camp based on a video of last season's junior sailing camp. I have a club, a funny story, a golf pro did a really funny video during a huge rainstorm this winter. It was only about 90 seconds, but it showed what they were all doing. And they were dusting in the pro shop, and then they were like literally watching flowers grow with all the rain. They were taking cat naps. Uh, but then they went to the chef, and they showed the chef pre preparing food to encourage their members that they can still come down for dinner, even though it's pouring rain, that Chef Dave is still in there, um, you know, making hot soup, homemade soup, and all these great things. Um, it showed a lot of personality. They did a great job, and it certainly increased uh, dinner participation for them in a night that probably would have been um, pretty well, pretty um, bleak. Also on your website, I like a Meet the Team page. Uh, you can do this within the different areas so that you have uh, your golf staff versus your tennis staff, for example. It's a really um, nice personal touch, and it helps members be more comfortable uh, with the staff, and it's a nice way to put names uh, and faces together. One of my larger health and fitness clients in New Jersey actually has this really cool hotspot map that we did for them at the bottom of their homepage. Uh, we built it out of a static map of their property. The hot spots here identify different areas on their campus. For example, one would be the pool, one is the, this Parisi Speed School, one is their uh, main clubhouse. When you click on the buildings where the arrow is pointing here, a slide comes out with a description of what's in that building, in this case, the Parisi Speed School. If you do have a large club, uh, whether it's inside or outside, this is a great way to emphasize that, but it's also um, a way to make it easy for new members to get around. Okay. And then thirdly, regarding your website, make it actionable. Um, this is an example of Mirabelle again. They have these large interactive callouts on their homepage to emphasize certain areas of the club. This mouse over activity here displays text over the photo, as you can see. And the learn more button is just a call to action that takes the visitor to another page with more information, in this case, about obtaining membership at the club. This next example actually is the Women's University Club of Seattle. They do a great job communicating with their members on a weekly basis of upcoming events. Uh, members can also uh, click directly from the um, e-newsletter here and they can register um, for an event at the club through the website. They do a great job communicating with their members. Okay, let's talk a little bit about social media for your club. Why your club should be engaging with social media what you should and should not post, and how you can use it proactively um, to your advantage. First, let's talk about um, why you should be on social media. 92% of people trust earned media, which are their friends on Facebook. 70% trust online consumer reviews like Yelp and Angie's List. And only 47% trust traditional paid media like ads on TV or in magazines. Um, so these stats are a great reason why your club should be on social media. And to put some perspective around the number of people who are on social media today, think about the old school technology. It took the telephone 75 years to reach 50 million users. It took the radio 38 years to reach 50 million users. It took TV 13 years, and the internet took four years to reach 50 million users. Facebook, however, took just three and a half years to reach 50 million subscribers. And Pinterest actually took less than that, less than three years to reach 50 million subscribers. And today there are over 1 billion active Facebook users daily. And of course, it does not stop with Facebook. Millennials especially spend much more time even on Twitter and Snapchat than on Facebook and Instagram. This is why it really is important to engage in multiple social media channels to connect with members and prospective members. So what are some things that you can do to get started? First of all, you should start following other relevant businesses. So from the club's perspective, so whether they're local businesses in your community 
or partners or vendors of the club, maybe your local CMAA chapter, the Evergreen chapter, your PCMA chapter for private club marketing associates, um, other regional chapters, um, as well as uh, CMAA national. And you don't want to just follow them. You want to engage with their content. You want to like it. You want to share it. You want to comment on it. Um, you also want to make sure you include your social media icons in your email signatures. Um, as well as any member and prospective member communications. Um, also, you can easily share content between the different social media sites. Um, and also, you can integrate that social media content into your website. Um, you can do that with like Facebook posts and Twitter uh, tweets, uh, as well as an Instagram feed of photos. They can all be right there on your website. Also, don't be shy about asking employees or vendors or friends of the club and members as well to follow you. And most importantly, I can't stress enough to be patient. Building a following on social media definitely does not happen overnight. So you really do have to go into it with um, some patience. So now that we know we definitely need to be on social media, let's talk about what we should be posting um, and maybe what we shouldn't be posting. So number one is don't make it all about you all the time, or the club, I should say. Um, you want to consider your buyer personas. You want to consider community involvement, philanthropy work, those tips um, to really show you as an expert. Everybody loves good success stories of your members or even your staff. Um, you want to promote engagement of your content. What I mean by that is promote other people liking it and commenting on it or sharing it. Everybody loves team photos, um, whether it's a retirement at the club or holidays. Um, once you really kind of cover all of this, then it really is okay to share some upcoming events or membership specials, but you definitely don't want all your posts to just be about that. Okay, let's break, them, break this down um, a little bit here. So consider your buyer personas. When you know who they are and what they are interested in, it does make it a lot easier to know what to post um, to have the most impact, also to increase your followers and to increase engagement. Community involvement. It lets your followers see another side of you. Whether they are members or prospective members, they now see that the club and the club staff play a role in a positive community environment. Also, charity involvement um, lets your followers see another side of you, but it can also increase awareness and participation for your favorite charity. So that's just totally a win-win. As far as the experts, Oshner Fitness Center here a couple days before Thanksgiving posted um, for all of us to see how much exercise it takes to burn off Thanksgiving dinner. You might not want to see it two days or three days before Thanksgiving, but it certainly did put them um, as the experts, that they are letting you know what you need to do, and you could certainly do it at their fitness center. And then success stories. Everybody loves a good success story. So Stick Up for Exercise um, here, as you can see, is a program one of my health and fitness clients in California started to promote a healthy lifestyle. So they started a campaign asking their members to join in. Um, members were instructed to post pictures of themselves with scotch tape on their noses, as you can see, kind of that stick up, I guess. Um, they, asked, they were asked to post these pictures on their own social media sites with that hashtag, Stick Up for Exercise. Um, in the end, the team who had the most likes at the end of what are the, whatever the time frame was, was given a free month of membership dues. So programs like this, they're fun to do, they raise awareness, um, and they also increase your followers, and they increase um, or promote engagement of your content. So by sharing this and, and liking it and commenting, it really gets more activity um, for all of your posts. Um, and lastly, team photos, always a bonus. At Members First, we post <laughs> all kinds of stuff, educational information. We host webinars like this. We write blogs. But honestly, the team photos in our Halloween costumes um, always seem to get the most likes and engagements from all of our followers. Um, and then real quick, I want to look at um, some proactive steps that you can take using social media, specifically with Twitter. So. If your club is actually um, looking to boost uh, your wedding and event business, you should really spend a few minutes every day on Twitter searching for certain keywords and phrases within your local radius that surrounds the club. 
such as, in this case, looking for a wedding location. That's actually what I searched for. The search phrase should be something that somebody actually might tweet about. This search, and I searched all different cities with this same um, wedding location, and I found this in Vail. Um, it showed me a post from this woman, Emily DiDonato, um, that they're looking, she and her fiance are in Colorado looking for a wedding venue. Um, if you find something like this in your area, you should definitely message the person and invite them to meet with you at your club. The Twitter world is all about um, reaching out and engaging. It's like a, a big internet cocktail party, honestly. And so it's totally appropriate that if I was uh, managing a, a club in Vail, Colorado, that I could reach out to them and congratulate them on their engagement and invite them to come in and, and take a look at our wedding venue. Next, we're gonna focus on what inbound marketing is and how it is relevant to your club. Specifically, how inbound marketing can help your club increase traffic, increase leads and members. By definition, inbound marketing is a holistic data-driven approach to marketing that attracts individuals to your brand and converts them into lasting customers. More simply, inbound marketing focuses on creating quality content that pulls people towards your club and product where they naturally want to be. So let's break it down a little bit here. Um, inbound marketing is using content to attract really strangers to your brand through things like blogs, social media publishing, and keywords. The attraction turns a stranger into a visitor. Inbound marketing really does start with blogging. Blogging is the single best way to attract visitors to your website. In order to be found by the right prospective member, you must create educational content that speaks to them and answers their questions. Successful inbound strategies are all about remarkable content, honestly, and social publishing allows you to share that valuable information on the social web, engage with your prospects, and put a human face on your brand. Interact on the networks where your ideal buyers spend their time. That's what it's all about. Um, it's then converting these visitors into leads with uh, calls to action and landing pages. Calls to action um, are buttons or links that encourage your visitor to actually take action, like download a white paper on the top 10 reasons to join a private club, is an example. Landing pages are where um, you should direct the visitor when they click a call to action or a Google paid ad, like we talked about under that search engine marketing slide. The landing page is where you can actually capture the visitor's name and email address, generating a lead for you before you actually give them that piece of content. At the very least, you do want to capture their email address. The contact information is really the most valuable currency that there is to the online marketer. So in order for your visitors to offer up that currency willingly, which is their email address, you wanna put something out there in return. And that something comes in the form of content. It could be an ebook or a white paper or tip sheets or even videos. Any information that would be interesting and valuable to each of those personas. It's then about closing them as a new member. So you've attracted the right visitors and converted the right leads but now you need to transform those leads into members. Certain marketing tools can be used at this stage to make sure you are closing the right leads at the right time. Customer relationship management or CRM systems facilitate sales by making sure you have the right information at your fingertips to better engage with prospects across every channel. If your visitor needs more time before becoming a member, you can utilize tools like email and social media just to continue providing great relevant content to them until they're convinced that they need to join your club. And then finally, it's delighting them with targeted and smart content, surveys, and different offers. The inbound way is all about providing remarkable content to our users, whether they're visitors, leads, or existing members. And just because somebody's already joined your club, obviously that doesn't mean you forget about them. We know that, you all are about service. And you do wanna to continue to engage with them and delight them, and the idea is um, making them members for life. Surveys are also a great way to figure out what your members want. They shouldn't be long surveys, they definitely don't need to be, but with even just a few targeted questions, you can learn a lot about your members' goals and how you can help them achieve those goals at the club. Also, a social monitoring allows you to keep track of social conversations that matter to you most. So listen out for your customers or members' questions and comments and likes and dislikes and reach out to them with relevant content. 
This goes back to that proactive searching on Twitter for keywords that are relevant to your club or geography, like weddings or sailing lessons or golf tournaments. If you find people who are asking the Twitter world, and people do, for a recommendation to host a corporate golf tournament, if you're allowed to have golf tournaments on Mondays, for example, feel free to jump in with an introduction. Following this approach will definitely turn your visitors into members and members into brand ambassadors. My marketing services director always likes to say that traditional marketing efforts is like um, marketing with a bullhorn, uh, while inbound marketing is marketing with a magnet, which is a much softer approach. Um, here are some big numbers just reflecting people's behavior towards traditional marketing, such as TV and direct mail. I know most of you aren't advertising on, on TV, but I do know a lot of clubs that do direct mail campaigns. 94% um, of, of people skip TV ads, 91% unsubscribe from emails that are just selling them something. 27% of direct mails never opened, and 200 million people are on the uh, do not call list. And a big difference here between traditional marketing and inbound marketing is that traditional marketing um, is marketer-centric, while inbound is customer or member in our case-centric. It's all about providing the content that your buyer wants, whether it's wedding tips or membership information. What it definitely isn't is it's not just about selling them. Because when you use inbound marketing, your members will come to you. And as I keep saying, obviously, inbound marketing is all about content, but um, it allows you to bring strangers into your website with various forms of content, like blogs. Again, Google loves blogs on your website, um, so it does help you get found. Um, things like photos, infographics, videos. Again, I can't stress videos enough. Even podcasts and presentations. Um, it also um, allows you to show that you're an expert in certain areas. Um, these people will follow you and subscribe to your content if it is content that they want. And by doing this, you are always top of mind with them. And that is the new way to attract members or existing members to increase participation. This is an example of the Cornell Club. Um, they were looking to promote a certain membership category, a fitness membership category. So instead of doing any advertising um, for this membership category, they actually created a case study focusing on a member who achieved his goals after becoming a fitness member. This is something that was provided on their website. It was shared through their social media sites, and it was linked um, through their educational e-newsletter that they send out into a prospective uh, member base. Um, also, AVAC is Almaden Valley Athletic Club. They take full advantage of their club blog to provide informative and educational content on a regular basis. They aren't using this blog to sell memberships. They're using it to provide um, educational information. But just by being top of mind with the subscribers of the blog, it will sell them memberships. This is an example um, again, of a private club that was promoting weddings on their website. Um, a button was placed. Uh, on their website and within their social media sites, as you can see up here. Um, the button took you to a landing page on the website uh, that asked for a name and email capture form, uh, asked your name and email. Um, and once you provided that information, the visitor was able to download a beautiful wedding brochure. And the club captured all of those qualified leads just by simply asking for the name and email address. Okay, your inbound funnel is going to consist of driving traffic to your brand, to your club, turning your traffic into leads, and turning your leads into members. Inbound marketing also does provide um, you with the ability to leverage many online tools to analyze what works and what doesn't work for your particular buyer personas. Um, inbound marketing definitely has proven results, so I'm just going to go through um, a few different stats here, um, a Northeast club that we work with that embraced inbound marketing back in the end of 2015. These are the number of um, leads that were generated. Uh, and you can see from them how much more successful they were in generating leads in 2016. Their inbound campaigns consisted of keyword research and search engine optimization, uh, social publishing, which also included a new blog, um, an email campaign with a membership offer. And the offer drove the user to a landing page where they entered their name and email address in order to download the membership brochure. And by quarter last year, these are the leads they generated with some of those different campaigns. Okay. Um, also, you can see from this graph that inbound does work across multiple industries. It definitely works in the private club industry. 
And from this one, you can also see it's the dominant strategy for companies with fewer than 200 employees. Some additional stats for you that were provided by HubSpot. HubSpot is a leading inbound agency located in Cambridge, Cambridge Mass. Companies are three times as likely to see higher ROI on inbound marketing campaigns than outbound. Inbound efforts achieve higher ROI than outbound regardless of total marketing spend. 84% of small businesses are predominantly using inbound marketing. Three out of four marketers across the globe prioritize an inbound approach to marketing. So how do we make inbound marketing work? There are so many channels and a different tool for each channel. Trying to manage a campaign across all these different platforms can certainly take up a lot of time. It can take resources. Um, you certainly want to make sure that anything that you're doing is effective. Um, we do provide uh, inbound marketing. We try to make it as simple as possible for our clients. Um, but also there are just some simple steps um, that you can take to implement your own inbound strategy. Planning, strategizing, implementation, and then launching. So let's start with a plan. Define your challenges first that you may have at the club and identify what your objectives are at the club. Your objectives could be to gain a certain number of followers in say 12 months on one of your social media channels. Um, it could be to gain a certain number of leads per campaign that you're doing. Or it could be to generate so many members um, in a certain number of months. You want to address any resources and budgets that you um, have at the club. And then going back to the beginning of this presentation, you want to identify who you are as a club. Secondly, you want to strategize. So with a plan in place, you can begin to strategize. First, you want to identify your buyer personas and then map their buyer's journey. The buyer's journey is the process the buyers go through to become aware of evaluate and purchase new products or services, such as a membership to a private club. You want to identify who else on the team is part of this process. So if you're the marketing director, you may want to recruit your membership director, maybe your golf pro, maybe even you have committee members that are involved to participate in content collection um, and videos. And then you always want to have an editorial calendar to identify when content is being posted um, and sent out and what mediums you're using to send out that content. To implement your strategy, you need um, to be able to create, create, create great content in different forms, so such as blogs um, as well as videos. You want to make sure you have calls to action and landing pages to capture leads. And of course, you want some sort of sales tool to keep up with all of your leads. Some of the other clubs we've worked with, they've had so many leads, um, they've had to put in a, 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 um, a system that they can keep better track of them. And once you have launched a campaign, you can really monitor each channel. You can respond to your leads and review stats to really see what works and what doesn't. It's definitely a moving target with each campaign. Each campaign is different and it's okay to run a campaign. And if it doesn't work for you, change it up and run a different campaign until you find what works best for your buyer personas. So in summary, let's just talk about what we've um, learned today. So we started with the member life cycle, starts with brand awareness and ends with brand ambassadors. Uh, the first step for you at the club is to identify who you are and who your buyer personas are. Uh, we learned that the millennials are outpopulating all other groups and need to be marketed to very differently. And your club website should be the central hub of your communications um, and, and be easy to find, impactful and actionable. Uh, digital marketing has proven to be much more effective than more older traditional marketing. And inbound marketing, we learned, can help you increase traffic, leads, and members. And for your existing members, can help you increase participation at the club. So I am going to go ahead and open my panel and see what we have um, for questions. Bear with me one second. Okay. Okay, so we have a couple questions. So the first question, my golf pro has his own blog. That's great. Um, should we have him direct people to our website through his blog or should we create our own golf blog? So that's a really good question. 
Um, the answer really is it, it does depend. So blogs are considered part of that attract phase and can really be the biggest what we call Google juice out there because it provides changing content all the time and that's what Google really likes. Um, and so it makes it easier for people to find your website. Um, if your golf pro is creative with his or her content, um, it might make more sense to leverage their following um, and work with them to create maybe additional content through their blog that draws the followers back to your website. Um, or you could work with uh, him or her to create even conversion paths for his, follow, his or her followers um, on that blog to become leads for the club's website. So kind of connecting the two. Um, if you aren't blogging today, though, if you're just kind of testing out blogging for the first time, then I would say 100% I would recommend that you create one that is branded for your club. Okay. Um, the next question uh, I have is, my GM thinks we should have a LinkedIn account. Have you experienced any success with that platform? So, again, another really good question. Um, some social media channels work great for some clubs, but not always for others. So in regards to LinkedIn, we have seen clubs that have been successful both with content and with branding on LinkedIn. Um, having a professional LinkedIn company page for your club is definitely step one. You want to create and design the page so that your team can properly connect their profiles to it. Um, secondly, you want to kind of test out content. So if you're creating like eBooks, um, it's a good resource because it's a social network for professionals. Um, again, knowing who those buyer personas are is really key here because um, knowing if they're on LinkedIn is important. So for example, if you're a city or a business club, um, LinkedIn is probably a great place for you to be. That's exactly who your personas are going to be. Um, but even if you're not, your buyer personas may include a lot of professionals. Um, so it could still be a great place for you. Also, it's a great place to build your um, uh, to build your um, staff, your career opportunities. Um, another question, um, we started a blog last year and we had a really hard time getting content for it. So we took it down. Okay, yeah. So how have other clubs been successful blogging? So one important step up front really is to create that editorial calendar for all of your communication channels. So whether it's email communication, social media, or blogging, the calendar should specifically lay out the type of content you're going to post, the medium you're going to post it in, and the date you're going to post it, but also who is responsible for it. So you need to hold some of those people accountable for their content. Another important thing to remember um, about inbound uh, marketing is that sharing content is more than acceptable if it's from a relevant and reliable source. So for example, um, one day a week on your editorial calendar, maybe a day that you share PGA news, for example, um, especially if we just came off a master's weekend, right? So, um, you know, you can certainly share that content. Um, you can use that for social media as well as blogging. Okay, that's a great question. Um, I have another question. Uh, what club do you work with that has a great blog? Oh, that's a great question. Um, Put me on the spot. Um, I would say we actually just launched a new website for Tiburon Golf Club down in Naples, Florida, and they're getting into blogging. And they literally launched today, and he said, actually, he posted on Facebook thanking our team, but he said um, the members love the site and they love the new blog. Um, and it's, I believe it's just TiburonNaples.com, um, and their blog should be linked right to that site. So, but I'll also think of some others, and I will. Um, include that in my follow-up so that um, people can see uh, who else is blogging and how that's going. So I think those four questions are all of the questions that we have, which I greatly appreciate. And again, I appreciate um, everyone's attendance. And I owe you um, a code for credit for this particular webinar and to um, Susan, I'm from New England. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. So Susan and I have a lot of fun during football season. Um, and to show what a good sport she is, she suggested that I use the New England, I'm sorry, the um, Super Bowl winning New England Patriots as your code that you can email to her in order to get credit for the webinar. So again, uh, your code is the New England Patriots. And um, thank you again so much, all of you, and have a wonderful 
rest of your week. And as I said, I have recorded this presentation um, and I will um, upload it to the Evergreen Chapters website for you and we'll let you know when that's done. Okay, thank you all so much. Have a great week.